Welcome to Welcome the, to Everglow, the Everglow, starring me, AB3, also known as Neil, here to help you live better, travel cheap, and overall enjoy a better quality of life by working less. Now, I've traveled the world, I've interviewed people, I've delved deep down inside of caves, and you name it, looking for answers. Answers to make me happier. And this all started because I was just cracking under the pressure of being a lawyer. And bear in mind, I don't even work at a big law firm, I handle my own law practice. But the energy of people was just pushing me to the brink. And so that's why I started the show. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Everglow, or whatever I happen to be calling the podcast at this present time. All right, so since you last talked to me, I had resolved to quit practicing law. Probably a lot of you thought I would cool down and uh, change my mind. Well, I have and I haven't, um, because it's been too many times that I get all worked up, I want to quit, I cool down, then I keep going forward. Um, so this time I'm going to meet myself somewhere in the middle, and that is I am definitely toning everything down with the practice, kind of in wind down mode. I'm going to keep taking cases, but I'm going to be saying no to anybody and anything that seems remotely stressful, even if it smells like it and I don't know yet. But more importantly, I want to get on to uh, something related to that topic, which I'm going to call spring cleaning. It's actually November right now in LA. So technically it's not spring, but who really gives a crap? Why not call it spring cleaning? Because you'll understand what the premise of this is in the first place. All right, so it's time for spring cleaning. Spring? It's not even winter yet. How did we get to spring? Cool your jets, guys. I'm referring to clearing out the clutter in your life. Believe every spring, even if you're in Southern California where we have one season all year, I think you should take a pause Look around you and do some thorough cleaning. And I'm not just referring to wiping down your toilet bowl. When I say spring cleaning, I'm actually referring to removing all of the clutter from your life that you've accumulated. This includes the tangible junk, such as the bizarre porcelain vase someone gave you that doesn't match anything in your house, or the 10-year-old laptop that doesn't work, but you've kept it around to use as a paperweight. But it also involves something much more than just the material junk that accumulates. I'm referring to the people in your life that no longer serve a purpose. Anyone in your orbit that brings you down in any way, assuming it's not just situational, should be cleaned up as part of your spring cleaning ritual. While cleaning the junk in your house can help clear up space in your head, so can cleaning out certain friends, acquaintances, and people in your life as well. You may be wondering if I'm too quick to throw people out. First, let me say that I'm not referring to your friends that are going through a hard time and who need your support. After all, that's what friends are for, right? If I got kicked to the curb every time I needed some counseling from a friend, then I probably wouldn't have any friends left myself. I am referring to little nuggets of people who automatically conjure up bad memories for you and with whom you have no remaining positive relationship with. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's start with social media. The first place to start the cleanup is with your social media accounts. I don't know what people are using these days, but the main one for me is Facebook, although now Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter are quite popular for keeping in touch. LinkedIn is another such service where you tend to see people pop up with whom you haven't spoken or interacted too much, if at all, in years. Thanks to the internet, it's almost impossible to ever delete any ex-girlfriend or boyfriend since the algorithms and tracking pixels seem to always keep reintroducing you to your exes as suggested friends, especially on LinkedIn. I remember there was a girl that left a lot of bad memories for me that I wanted to break up with, and I did break up with, and every six months she'd be a suggested friend and I'd have to see her face pop up on my screen. Not fun. Who uses LinkedIn anyway? That service just strikes me as more of a professional version of Facebook that few people actually use proactively. Anyway, my point is to start off with the little things. When I reviewed my first list of friends on Facebook, I had surprisingly accumulated a number of people that included people that had bullied me as a kid, or one guy that I had felt was quite racist and an overall dick in law school. There I was looking at a photo of Jamie Clark, 
one of the kids who had pretty much forced me to change schools at the age of seven due to his daily torments at recess. And yet, there he was on my Facebook friends list. And yes, every time either one of their feeds, I'm referring to their news feeds, would pop up in mine, or I'd see their names, it would stir negative emotions in me. Yeah, maybe I should just get over it. But given how some of these people never apologized for the things they had done, nor were they really part of my life, it didn't really make much sense to have to keep reliving their memories and have their reminders pop up. Solution? Delete! I remember one kid, Brian Sumella. He would hang out with me and my friends. At the time in middle school, he was the bigger kid in the class, tall, blonde, and he thought he was the shit. When you're a kid, you don't realize a lot of things. He wasn't super well liked, but we would all hang out daily and he had his bad habit of flipping out over little things and wanting to fight people. He definitely had some anger issues as a kid. Anyway, one such time while we were playing football, he elbowed me right in the face and broke my nose. He acted like it wasn't his fault. To this day, my nose is still crooked, believe it or not. I think I have a deviated septum. Anyways, I thought, this prick, why is he on my Facebook friends list? DELETE! This whole exercise is about clearing out the clutter. You can't move on from negative experiences and have a fresh mind if you're always seeing reminders of negative things that have impacted you. So that's one way to clean up your social media and part of the garbage that's floating around in space in your life. Start with your social media accounts. Why? Because there are little things in there that could potentially be reminding you of bad experiences and bad people every day for absolutely no reason. All right now, let's move on to your current outer circle friends. Some people call these acquaintances. I don't know where the line is between acquaintance and outer circle friends, but let's just get started. We all have an inner circle of friends, and these are the close friends we interact with regularly and hang out with when we can. If you ditch these friends because they're a bit negative here and there, then you may be overreacting. These are the friends who you should be loyal to and who are loyal back. Unless something drastically changes and one of them is constantly bringing you down with their problems for a protracted period of time, you may not need to delete them, but at least scale back your interactions with them. I believe friends are like family, so I'm not one to walk away that quickly. But what can be an issue are the outer circle friends. Sometimes we can have friends that we've had for years. We can outgrow some of those friends and yet we keep them around even though we've grown apart in every way imaginable. Nothing wrong with remaining friendly and cordial, but sometimes these old school friends and you can grow apart and become so different that the relationship is more toxic than it is beneficial to either of you. Yet often, perhaps from familiarity or custom, we keep these friends around even though things have changed. I'll give a current example in my own life. I have, or had, a friend from high school. He used to sit in front of me in law class. Yeah, we had law class in high school, out in the trailer in Bell High School. Unlike my other friends who I had grown up with, this guy, we'll call him Jason, that's not his real name by the way, he came out of nowhere one day and was new to the school, you know, the new kid on the block, exciting. Well, he had more of a brash aspect to him since he was from the old big city of Toronto. Meanwhile, the rest of us had grown up in Little Bell's Corners here in Ottawa, Canada. For whatever reason, we hit it off a bit, me and him. He was loud, confident, and interesting to talk to. Although early on, I could see our differences, it didn't really matter because it was high school and, well, who cared? He was one of those kids that didn't do his homework, would show up to class with no books or homework done, and sometimes not even show up with a pen or pencil. Whatever. Anyway, our differences continued, as he decided it would be a smart move to drop out of high school to sell Amway products. Yeah, you heard that correctly. If you're not familiar with Amway, it's a gigantic multi-level marketing company where you make money by signing up people underneath you to sell you and grow a pyramid of commission underneath you. Brilliant move. Of course, he decided to try to convince me to join as well, which of course I wouldn't. Regardless, we had fun together. I didn't hang out too much with him, but we did talk an awful lot, and he was always trying to sell me stuff always trying to figure out a way to make some profit from me or whoever else was around him. Ah, the naive me of younger days. One of my favorite memories was the time he told me he was coming to pick me up to go to the new casino that he'd built on the Quebec side. I got ready, young high school kid, got all dressed up, excited to be in the big lights of some brand new casino. Well, I got all dressed up and I waited for three 
hours for Jason to come pick me up. Bear in mind, in Ottawa, he lived a whopping 15 minutes away from me at most. By car, of course. After three hours, he calls me from a payphone at the casino in Quebec saying he was playing poker and he would be over to my place to pick me up in a half hour. Now, let me get this straight. The casino was about half an hour from both of us. So instead of coming to pick me up, he had selfishly, selfishly driven all the way to the casino, gambled his heart away for three hours, and was only now telling me he was going to come back to get me. Yeah, sure. No apology, no remorse, or care in the world for leaving me waiting on my weekend for three hours. Let's just say I didn't hang out with him that day. As time went on, and I did undergrad, and eventually my MBA, his behavior became worse. We always kept in touch and I always invited him on things, including down to Mexico to visit me, as well as a Y2K trip to Miami. Every time, he would be a royal pain in the butt and pissed people off because he'd never have any money, was one of these guys that always wanted to borrow money from people, wanting cigarettes, who knows what. I didn't realize it at the time, but he definitely wanted everyone else's world to revolve around him. He expected everyone to wait for him and go and do the things he would want to do with no compromise. Despite everything and all the BS he pulled on people, I kept him around, although at an arm's length. As I matured, I was less patient with his and other people's bullshit. Not too long ago, he talked about how he was dying and didn't have much time left to live. Sounds like a major life-altering thing, right? Well, think again. When I talked to him several months later and asked him how he was feeling and what was up with the whole dying thing, he had no idea what I was talking about. I think they call people like that pathological liars. Anyway, suffice it to say on my latest trip to Canada in July, I didn't even bother trying to see him. I think he was a bit hurt by that, but on my last couple of trips, he never made an effort to see me, and once expected me to drive a different route from Montreal to Toronto, just so I could divert my trip to see him. This may sound reasonable, save for the fact that I had already tried to see him when I was in Ottawa, and he had flaked on me. But my point is, I decided this would be my farewell tour. When he became pushy about me answering my phone, bear in mind, I was up in Ottawa helping out at a wedding and doing a million other things, I realized that it was time to take out the trash. Ironically, he ended up acting as though he lost respect for me and didn't want to be my friend anymore. In a way, he took himself to the curb, but I was more than happy to see him out. Good riddance. Even just thinking about him pisses me off. So why bother keeping people like that around? My long-winded point is that you need to start looking at these people in your orbit, including these so-called friends that serve no purpose, other than to annoy the fuck out of you every now and again. If they conjure up negative feelings and are always trying to use you, you have to simply toss them to the curb. Imagine how much time and energy they're taking up. Oh, 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 All right, now let's move on to the inner circle friends. These are your current friends that you talk with regularly, spend time with, hang out with, whatever. This is a trickier one. Friends in your inner circle are probably there for a reason. I hope. They're your inner circle because they've had your back, supported you through the good times and the bad, and they're your support system. I wouldn't be so quick to spring clean these people. What I would do though is evaluate who is who. This means that you need to check on who is consistently becoming problematic. We all go through shit. That's called life. But that doesn't mean you have to sit around in the shit and suffer 24-7 from it. If you have an inner circle friend who has changed over time and is stuck in the same rut, year after year, complaining and draining you, I suggest perhaps putting some distance. Distancing yourself a bit to protect your own sanity can be a form of spring cleaning without making you a bad friend. Other friends can simply grow apart if things can happen that make them turn on you. They can attack you by gossiping about you negatively, being jealous of your success, or just pissed off in light, uh, life in general. A good friend of mine recently got married and some of her closest friends of almost 30 years ended up being very negative about her, the wedding, and even her groom. They had stopped being regular supportive friends over the years, and she decided that after the wedding, she wasn't going to try anymore. A great move! You should only be aligning yourself with positive people. My point? Delete inner circle friends as necessary as well, or at least put them at a distance so you don't get drained. 
In my own life, there was one guy from law school who was part of my inner circle, I guess you could say, after law school. There were a group of four of us that would always hang out, but he lived a little bit further away in Southern California. What was interesting though is, he always wanted everybody to come see him, even though we all know the driving distances here in Southern California. He lived hours away. He would rarely, if ever, come up to see any of us, but he had this bizarre expectation that we should always come down to see him, as though we had nothing better to do. And if you didn't see him, he'd often lay the guilt trip on you. I never really liked that, and for fortunately I didn't really have to deal with that, although some of our other friends got guilt tripped into seeing him all the time. What I did find out though is he started badmouthing me behind my back for literally no reason at all. Fortunately, my good friends just ditched him and stopped talking to him altogether because they didn't want to put up with his biased BS. But that's a good example of somebody you'd want to stay away from. I cut him off and I've never talked to him since and it's been about five or six years. No one misses him. Now on to the next part. Family. This is by far the trickiest one. It's hard to go deep into this one because the reality is you can't delete family so easily. There is an obligation that exists. However, there is an obligation that you owe to yourself to save yourself from harm. If family members are toxic, you can distance yourself from them as well. The big problem is that if you're younger and you live at home, your options are very limited. If you leave home, you're not going to live very well having to find a place to stay and fend for yourself while maybe you're still in high school. If you stay, the situation is as bad, if not worse, because you don't have peace of mind since you're under the same roof with whoever is terrorizing you. Basically, you're living inside a shit sandwich of options. Sorry, there is no magical rule. I do not suggest living on a park bench because you have a family member that's bipolar. But if you are in a situation where you can feasibly move out and rent a room somewhere, as difficult as that might be, it is probably worth it to save you from the pain and suffering. When you get more independent, you can distance yourself from your family members as need be. Either way, don't think because someone is your family it becomes an excuse for their bad behavior. Seriously, do what's good for you first. Just because someone is family doesn't excuse bad behavior, and you shouldn't have to either put up with it or suffer from it. There's no point in going down with someone else's ship, even if they are blood. Unless, of course, you're going to inherit a shitload of money, then you may want to grin and bear it. So, honestly, in closing, I think you should do a spring cleaning twice a year. Once in the spring, and another time around fall. It means taking a step back and seeing what doesn't serve you anymore in your life. Do you ever realize how cluttered life can get? On the physical side of things, you have old t-shirts and shoes in your closet that you don't wear anymore. Books and magazines pile up. How much time do you spend looking for stuff every day because there's just so much junk lying around your house? Imagine how much time you could save if you kept your things you actually needed. Even trying to pick what to wear in the morning would be simplified because you wouldn't have to sift through so many drawers and closets full of old crap. These spaces when emptied out create a certain peace of mind. Watch. The same holds true for the people in your life. In fact, it's even more important to monitor the people in your life because unlike a 20-year-old t-shirt with holes in it, a friend of 20 years with mental problems can poke holes in your life pretty damn quickly. When you think about the most stressful things you've been through in life, I'd be willing to bet much of them had to do with things other people did to you. So there it is, spring cleaning. Declutter your life so that you can open up space to attract amazing things, circumstances, and people. Like I always say, if you want your situation to change, then you change. And you can start to change by changing the things around you that you no longer want. Thank you for listening to our latest episode of Everglow. Check us out online at neilbartia.com, N-E-I-L-B-H-A-R-T-I-A.com for more blog articles and latest episodes. Leave any comments and likes below and we're happy to answer. Thank you for listening and see you next time.